on a wheelie. I had like my backpack, like coming home from school. I had like a brand new sweatshirt on doing a wheelie. <laughs> I looped out and the handlebar got stuck in the strap and it dragged me like 200, 300 feet. And I get up and I'm like somehow in front of the bike, in front of the front tire. And I'm like looking at this guy and he's cutting his grass. He just looked at me and shook his head and just kept, just kept going. I'm like, <laughs> I pick it up the bike. I'm like, oh man, I broke the shifter. I had to like shift like with my hand in order to get home, rode home and just laid in the backyard. I was like, oh, I'm hurting. Sammy, you've been wheeling since you were 16. Like actually really good at wheelies? Yeah, since I was like 16. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Get Vertical Real Talk. This is a Harley stunt riding podcast where you get to meet some of your most favorite Harley stunt riders. Today, you get to meet Sammy Stunts. He was a highly requested guest, and I'm stoked for you guys to meet him. Super playful dude, but we got into his mind a little bit about how he overcomes certain things that is super common in the stunt scene. Now, if you guys really like this podcast, it would mean a lot if you would subscribe and like and comment and just engage that helps grow this channel and we can get more heavy hitters on this podcast. The bigger the channel is, the more they're going to want to be on this podcast. So likes, comments, and reviews on the audio podcast go a long way. Super stoked for you guys to meet Sammy Stunts. Check him out. All right, we're going to get started. Okay. Well, thanks, Sammy, for coming. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. So, you know, you, you told me something once when we were writing and it really helped me out that day. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that I use the same advice in other situations in my life. And it's really helped me when like I'm trying something new or like I feel insecure or scared to like do that thing. Yeah. And that advice was, I don't think I just do. Yes. Do you remember saying that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you. What things have you learned from stunt writing that you apply in other areas of your life that's helped you? I would say if I'm going after, I don't know, working on the bike, mm -hmm. um, I don't really ever know what I'm doing, to be honest. But I just go after it and do it because, you know, a bolt's a bolt and that's a nut. You'll be able to get it back together eventually. You'll be able to fix it. Um, I've been picking up a new hobby, dancing. If you think about it too much, you're going to mess up and then just do it, you know, just try out. You never know what you're really capable of unless you try it or do it. And when you overthink things is when, when you're going to mess up because you already know how to do it. Kind of. Yeah. I don't know. It's really, it's a hard saying to explain, but if you like try it yourself, it makes a lot more sense. It does make sense because I noticed like, even with this podcast, like even today. Mm -hmm. Like I might be nervous when I wake up like, oh shit, but I think about, think about it too much. Then I'm, I'm getting in my head and it's like fucking with me, you know? So it's like, I don't know. That's why I appreciate that advice that you told me because it really has helped me. I'm like, okay, just don't think about it. Just do it. And with shows, I get super nervous. So I'm just like, okay, schedule a show and don't think about it. Just fucking show up. Yep. Don't even think about it when you're on your bike ready to clutch up just go overthinking will stop you from doing a lot of things totally or it would just you'll be doing it and you'll mess up non non-stop and then you're continuing to overthink oh my god i'm messing up i'm messing up so what yeah. you know it's a part of life it's part of life do you, is that what you do when you compete um i try not to oof. my first brawl i definitely overthought like a lot about it um I forget who told me, but they're like, you know, it's just another day at the lot with the boys. Yeah. I was like, man, you know what? You're right. You're right. Like that just like helped me stop from overthinking. Mm -hmm. And I was able to like have a lot more fun with it. And then obviously crowd can read off of like your body emotion and the way you like your, even like facial expressions. Yeah. It's huge. So if you're nervous and you're, you know, getting all fidgety and messing up, they're going to read off that. Versus if you're just out there, have a good time, have fun with your friends, they're going to like eat off of that. They okay. eat off of your energy. Dude, speaking of facial express expressions, you wear the modular and you're always smiling. That's like <laughs> something I feel like you're like known for almost because every time you come, you bring it on your wheelie and you come around to drift, 
to turn around, you're just smiling, you know? Yes. And, <laughs> and you're right. It does like elevate the vibes. Yes, it does. Do you do that intentionally or are you just having fun? I Honestly, like at first it was more like my awareness just so that I have more was a peripheral vision, whatever, with the module up is huge. I can't ride with the helmet down. Really? I, I really can't. I can see so much. I can see my handlebars. I can see everything oh. around me. It helps me so much. It's definitely a lot more dangerous, but. I didn't even think is, about that. Yeah. No, I, it helps see, a lot. I'm the opposite. I like my visor down because I don't like dust in my eyes. Yeah, I feel that. It fucks me up. Yeah. If I go fast, but it's like I only really ride out the lot, so yeah, I don't really do it. What other things that help you with your stunt riding? <sighs> Not thinking about what I'm doing. <laughs> Just going. Just going for it. Um, I listen to music. I blast music. So it's like someone tries to talk to me, I'm never going to be able to hear you at all. And that's made it very difficult with the brawls because I'm like trying to listen to Max, but at the same time, like, all right, I need to blast all my thoughts out of my head. Um, I always be like, be chewing a piece of gum, something, any way I can like keep my mind focused on something else other than what I'm actually doing helps me get out of my head and it makes what I'm doing a lot easier. Damn. That's crazy that you listen to music because I really listen to my bike a lot. Oh, I try not to. It doesn't fuck with you because I feel like it makes me better. I feel like my bike's going to blow up if I'm like listening to that thing. I'm really? going to get way too. I'm like, man, what's going on? Oh, you overthink everything. Oh, yeah. Do you, are you an, you're, you're an overthinker through, through and through? hundred percent. Damn. Yeah. I over, I, I think too much. <laughs> so, so not thinking has helped me a lot, at least with writing wise. Yeah, totally. But you're really good. Appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you're you. really good. How, what did it take you to get to this point? A lot of sea time. Um, not trying to follow what everyone else was doing, but trying to do my own thing and just mainly have a good time. And I guess like building up like little competitions with your friends, trying to see who can do the next trick. You know what I mean? And then how are you going to perfect that trick? How are you going to add your own style? Because I'm not going to say everyone can hand drag, but a lot of people can do hand drags. How can you add your style in your like your own way of how to do it, you know? And make it different. And make it different. Stand out. Yes. So is that what, like... Is that what motivates you and, and keeps you going? Yes. Yeah. I've been told I have a lot of style. You do? Um, I personally don't see it. I look at myself. I'm like, I got the, the modular up. I'm always smiling, making a weird face. I feel like I'm a goon. But I feel like also people feed off of that because they're like, all right, like, look at this kid. He's just out here having a fun time, not really caring like what's going to be happening. But he's killing it. So... You have like a laid back vibes when you, you're riding, but you're just doing the craziest shit. <laughs> so that's why it's like crazy to hear that you, you're in your head because you don't seem like afraid or yeah. anything. I'll show up to a new lot and I don't know anyone there and I'm definitely in my head for sure. Really? Like 100%. nervous? Yeah, I'll be nervous or like pulling up to the brawl and I'm like practicing. I'm like, I know I could do all these things, but am I going to be able to do those things here? because mm. I'm a very picky rider just because like if there's a bump at that lot oh man that whole time I'm going to be focusing on that one bump I'm like that thing's gonna throw me off <laughs> dude I know exactly it's, what you mean it's hard it's really hard I know what you mean and I, I I used to I'm getting better but I used to get in my head a lot when I would go to the stunts, a, a different stunt spot and I don't know if it had something to do with like you know, well, obviously now I don't push myself at all when I ride. But back in the day, I would push myself a lot and I would be landing tricks um, all the time. Mm -hmm. And of course, you post the trick when you land it. Yeah. But it hasn't been perfected yet. No, no. So when I would go to a new stunt spot in my head, I'm thinking everyone's expecting me to fucking jump to 50 50. Yes. But I can't do it every time. Yep. yep. So it's almost like an imposter syndrome. And I feel like I'm faking it or some shit but everyone posts their best shit everyone like, posts their best stuff like and it's almost like you show up to these events or these competitions and people you feel like all right people are expecting me to do this where it's like i tried a thousand times to get that mm -hmm. 
Like you have no idea how hard that was for me. I'm like, there's no way you're gonna see that trick. Especially in front of a crowd. In front of a crowd. With high pressure. Timed too. Yeah. yeah. No. With arm pump going on, adrenaline. Yeah. It's there's no way. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, I've noticed that too, and it's. I don't think we're the only ones. Definitely we cannot not. be. I don't know. We cannot be because. But then again, there's other people that perform really well under perf- uh, pressure. Yeah, that is true. I mean, look at how Diana Nate performs. He's always smiling. He's always just, I feel like he doesn't even know what he's doing when he goes out there. And he just tries something and just hits it perfectly. First try. I'm like, how do you, who, who are you? Yeah. How do you do Freak that? Freak of nature. Freak of nature. And it's just, I feel like some people do really well with the crowds. I don't do well with the crowds, but I love being in front of the crowd. Is that does that make sense at all? What makes you like being in front of the crowd? Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you're enjoying the episode. Real quick plug, I want to invite you guys to our online wheelie coaching course. This is exclusively made for Harley riders. We created a three-stage progression method that is guaranteed to teach you how to wheelie. This is for day one learning riders. It's broken down from day one all the way to balance point. With this course, you get our exclusive members only get vertical app that makes it easier to access while you're at the lot practicing. You also get to join our Facebook community where we have a group experts in there all ready to help and other Harley Stunt riders learning from each other. You'll also get invited with online group coaching with Bruce and I, where you can ask us direct questions about your progress and any struggles you're having. You can sign up at getverticalcoaching.com. Link will be in the description. Anyways, back to the show. I like cheering people up. I like hyping people up. I love seeing smiles. I like seeing people get just, you know, super excited. But at the same time, I don't like you just staring at me. (laughs) (laughs) Then why don't you just do shows? I haven't done, like, really any shows. I I did a couple shows back home, like, in the East Coast, but I haven't done one out here. Okay, so I haven't been given any opportunity. I'll hit you up next time we get, get a, when we land a show. I love shows. I'll, invi- I'll invite They're you. They're my favorite. Dope. Because maybe that's better than competition, mm-hmm. you know? Because competition, it's like, uh, it, there's a different reason behind it. And it's like, I you think, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, you can't go into the competition thinking like, hey, this is a competition. I look at it as, all right, this is just a show. But we're doing one run at a time. Ugh. Yeah. So it's hard. It's yeah. It's weird. It's like a talent show. <laughs> yeah. Do you practice your runs? Um, I have no idea what I'm gonna do in the run, but like me and TJ, we'll go a lot. We'll set up like a smaller area part of the lot, and then we'll just practice. We'll do two minute runs each. And time each other. Time each other. It's not the whole. What are we gonna do in the run? It's our more of like endurance because it is a lot yeah it is two minutes is a long time a long long fucking time time. it does not seem like it it is a long time (laughs) and it's crazy because in your head you think you have to go 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 yes but really you can pause for a moment to clutch up correctly Mm -hmm. and like get that good clutch up yes um my best friend becca uh i think my first ever brawl was colorado was it two years ago i don't know um, I was getting super nervous and like I did my first run and I was all over the place. She's like, you hey, listen, like you don't have to do everything in 10 seconds. I'm like, it kind of slow sense. down. Yeah. 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 It makes sense. It totally like, makes sense. Two minutes is a long time. You have time to take a break, look at people, you know, crowd interact. It's also huge. So it's just like, don't rush things. You want to know a cheat code? What? So Bruce and I used to hook up Cena's on our helmet and I'd be talking to him while he was doing his run. No way. Yeah. And I, and I wouldn't distract him, Yeah. but I I said, don't forget your high chairs or don't forget, you know, a certain trick. And I'd have it written down what tricks that, Mm -hmm. cause I'd forget too all the tricks that he knew. Yeah. But if you have someone to coach you or like say 30 seconds left, like in the headphones, Dude, it's, it's actually helpful. Yeah, that would help. Because it's like you have the time board up in the corner. But you're not paying attention to that shit. Everything's going on. You're like, I can't even see it. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I'm just waiting to see Matt just be like, 
cut it. It's the end of the run. And someone's gonna run out of there and cut you <laughs> off. Okay, we're good. <laughs> You're going on five minutes, Sammy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I stress so much out about like the time. Like, I've gotten so used to like the competitions and everything, where it's like my main worry is just going over time. I just don't want to go over time. I don't want to be that. Oh guy. my gosh. Yeah. So are you gonna compete more? I would definitely. I love competing. It's fun. But I also don't look at competing as competing. It's more you know like I mean? a show kind of thing. I like going out and see my friends. I like traveling. I like doing all that. So yeah. And the show is cool. It's yeah, really it is. Cool. It's fun. So it's it's more of like. It's not a competition to me. It's more of like an event. Like, all right, I get to see everyone. Totally. I get to have fun. It's like a social thing for me. Yeah, that's cool. But at the same time, I get to throw down. Have a chance to win a little bit of money and promote my sponsors and stuff, which totally. is cool. That's so, dope. Yeah, it's cool. Like Colorado, Four Corners, amazing. Because that's like part of the whole experience. I get to go camping. Like me, Jay Brew, like a couple guys, like just went and camped in a field. Everyone else, so like all a bunch of riders are at hotels and we're doing like community showers, like getting in there <laughs> with every, with like everyone else. It's like, we're no different than other people. Like we're just here to have a good time. Yeah. So that's cool. So are you famous? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Do you think people think you're famous? It, it really depends on the person, I guess. Like... So, like, I've been dancing a lot, and I'm, like, I'm trying to, they're, like, well, what are your other hobbies? And, like, I try to explain, like, oh, like, yeah, I stunt ride. But I don't think they ever really fully get it. Mm -hmm. Because it's really hard to, it's still a very underground scene. Yeah. And it's really unbelievable once you see it in person. It's, like, Mm -hmm. wow. Like, your first time at a lot is insane. We'll be, like, I had no idea this was even possible, was even a thing. And there's a whole world behind it. I wouldn't consider myself famous. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot of recognition, which is really cool. It's really nice to like hear that. Like hearing like Joy Fifty Five on the last podcast talking about me for like three minutes. I was like, man, that means so much to me. But no, I do not consider myself famous. Yeah, I feel you. I feel the same way. But sometimes I feel like people think that we are, and think that we're like untouchable or something. Yeah. But we're just normal fucking people. When I wasn't like friends with everyone with like big followings, I would go and I'll be like, like East Coasting. I like you'd go to this event, you get to see all these like famous stunt riders. Mm-hmm. Then you start to realize like, man, like they're just a normal person. Like I met Tallboy one time and he's just like, I think I had like 500 followers. I was like just starting out stunt riding. Just a normal guy. Were you fangirling? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the first famous stunt writer that started following you? I'd say Dom. Really? Dom, yeah. No, that's your buddy. Uh, that's my buddy. Isn't that funny how it works? Like, as soon as you get into get into the world of it, all these influencers that you thought were, like, untouchable become your friends. It was really cool for me. Um, just because it's like... I had, I was jumping into it. I didn't really know much. I always ask questions to people and I get it. Like a lot of people don't answer. Dom was the person who always answered my questions. He made it very like, not easier, but like I could talk to him. I'm like, okay. And he helped me out a lot through the process. And so now that I'm like a good writer and I'm like doing through all this, I try to answer people's questions as much as possible. Like at the scent spot? A stun spot Instagram, like I hate answering the same question all over the time, like over and over, but it's like, it, it helps people a lot. Like bars and rides are set up. I'll answer that all day, every day. Like if m- takes me 30 seconds to save you hundreds of dollars between buying bars and risers all over the place, like I'm glad I can help you with that. Totally. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay. But everyone has their own setup. So. But sometimes people would just want your they look up to you and they want to know what you run. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why we made a parts list. Yeah. That people could just click and just get for free. It's like, now we eliminate all those questions because it's a common question. It's like, first of all, what PSI do you run? What tire do you run? Front, rear, what are your settings at on your suspension? All the shit. Yeah. So I, we just made a parts list with all the settings and they can just click the fucking link in the bio. I was on the way to the country bar last night, and this guy pulled up right next to me. He goes, hey, where'd you get, like, the um, chain kit? I'm like, 
online like i don't know <laughs> amazon somewhere i don't know I'm like, i don't i really don't know like i forget i bought that thing like four years ago so i'm like i don't know what to do with it i don't know what the name is it works <laughs> yeah <laughs> anything will work anything. anything will work what do you think's the most por- uh important part of your bike setup handlebars really handlebars are huge um suspension really no big deal it does help. Suspension does help, but like seat and handlebars. Everything else, it's like. Mm, what seat really. do you run? I run a Saddleman. Saddleman, you like yeah. Saddleman. Saddleman. What bars? Big Al's, six inch pullbacks, and then the their Nickley and Eddie low bend bars. They're really skinny. Like they're the, like tw- I think twenty eight inches your bar, wide. Your, your yeah, like in? width wise, they're really skinny. I think I need skinnier ones. So I have found, and what I've also been told, which it kind of makes sense, is the skinnier the bar, the easier it is to wheelie, because you're not so widespread out, but uh, it's harder to drift, just because you don't have as much leverage to push mm. the bike down. It kind of beats you up a little bit more. Kind of makes sense to me. Versus the wider the bar, the easier it is to drift, but mm. harder to wheelie. Is it one inch bars or seven eighths? One inch. I you can't, I can't really? do seven eighths. No. Have you tried it? No. <laughs> That's why you can't do it. I don't like mi- I don't like mixing you things like up. Change. I you hate change. change. <laughs> like new grips will mess me up completely. Like, Isn't that crazy? A month before the brawl, like I got competition, I'm trying to change nothing. Like just the smallest little change will throw me off for so long. Yeah, try sharing your bike with your husband. Couldn't do it. Could not Fucks do it. Fucks me up. He's just, he changes the way my clutch disengages every time he rides. <laughs> oh man, it pisses me <laughs> off. <laughs> but you know what? I'm starting to actually get better at adapting. Okay, yeah. So maybe it's good for me. <laughs> you have those people who could like hop on other people's bikes and then just kill it. Nope. No, nope. I will you, refuse to ride your bike. Like you can ride mine, but I'm just saying that thing's a little clapped. But yeah, as long as it's safe, right? It just bar setup alone will throw me off. Crazy. Do amounts. you think it's because we're overthinkers that everything has to be perfect? Yes. Perfect condition, perfect weather. Hundred percent. I hate new things, and it's just yeah. like I almost gotta break it in, and make it mine. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like I, I, need, I, don't. I need new grips so badly right now, but I'm just like, really? you don't want so comfortable. It? I'm like, oh. they got like, the, the, it's all grooved in. I got like finger grooves now. <laughs> what grips do you run? I run uh, Renthal yeah. motor grips, like Something dirt bike grips. Yeah, same. They're like, what are you putting it on? Like a Harley? Like, oh, it won't fit. I'm like, trust me. I'll, I'll make it. Fit. I'll make that fit. S- spit on it. Yep, spit on it. <laughs> air chug. It take, it's so hard, but it works and it feels so well. Yeah. Grips are like a big thing for me. I've been through hundreds of pairs of grips. And I finally found a pair like I really like. I've been sticking with them for like the last two years. Let me see your hand. I got little baby hands. You need a 7 eighths bar. No. I'm, 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 I'm not <laughs> joking. It changed changed a lot for me. I feel so much more comfortable. I've sat on bikes with 7 eighths bars. Does it feel try comfortable? Ri- try riding. It's it. nice. I don't ride other people's bikes. I know, dude. I'm telling you. Just get some cheap pro tapers and just try it out. No, you're, you're and then I need new risers and then I need new clutch oh, lever. Yeah. It's like I gotta convert everything yeah. to seven eighths. It's like it was more of like a hassle versus comfort thing for yeah. me. I'm like, well, then I gotta spend like five hundred more dollars. I feel that. So fair enough. Fair enough. I'm I'm broke. I'm, start riding Harley's. It's hard out here. <laughs> it's hard out here for it's me. very hard. Yeah. I hear you. Okay, so I need some advice from you. What tire should I run on my Dyna that I can wheelie and drift? I am a huge fan of the Dunlop 401 and 402s. And then width-wise, I used to be a big 130 fan because you could swerve super easily. Mm -hmm. But I would stick with like a 140, 150. I feel like 160 is a little bit too wide. Almost like on like a 2 by 4 Like you're just going to go straight. You Mm want to at least be able to like move around a little bit. Safety wise, like oh, I gotta Swerve get out, out of right. the way. Yeah, is it sticky enough for wheelies, but not too sticky for drifting? Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of people have different. That all depends on PSI. So, like, what PSI do you recommend? Strictly, I do eighteen. Like that is low. I know that's for a fact. Low. Um, I know people who run thirty. I don't. I'm like, how do you even wheelie? Yeah, I couldn't. So and like. It all really depends on your style of drifting, too. Like, I like 
the tire sticking a little bit in the drift. So I'm really like really working it. That way I have a little bit more con- like control. control versus like I've hit the gas and slide now. That's what I noticed when I um, tried drifting on Bruce's bagger. He has more PSI and I barely gave it any gas and it's just skating. Yeah. I'm like, I almost like a more sticky tire mm-hmm. because then I can gas it more. It's almost like uh gives more forgiveness. Yes. I like sticky tires over like there's a tire called like the Dunlop 402 F. No, no. I call those the <laughs> snickle fritz. Those things <laughs> are so slippery. Those are burnout machines though. Really? You want to be a burnout bandit? Get one of those. They're not going to last long, but they're super hard and slippery. So you just slide everywhere. With but you're those. not doing no wheelies. I mean, I know people who do like, I think combo Chris, that's like his favorite tire. I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how he does it, but. So how do you do wheelies and drifting and when your tire is fucking lopsided? Because that's my issue too. I I start putting more pressure on my right side and then I get a new tire and now I'm fucking drifting when in my wheelies. I have the same issue. I'm a big left turn person. So my like the left of the tire would be like super smooth and the right looks almost brand new, at least for a takeoff. (laughs) And you do feel it in the wheelie, like mm-hmm. you do get pulled. I'll just like do a quick, like burn out to the right, and it will like even out a little bit. But even that much will help you. You end up adjusting. Yeah, that's what Bruce does for me. Body positioning is also huge on the bike too. So it's just like if you're able to almost go with it instead of fighting against it, it'll be a lot easier. Yeah. You're riding the bike. Bike's not riding you. You're not going to control a 650 pound motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. So just kind of go with it. Man, you're full of advice. I try to. <laughs> what try other to. nuggets do you have like that? I know you got more sayings like that in your overthinking head. The You're not riding the bike. I mean, uh, the bike's not riding you. You're riding the bike. Like you're in full control. That's like a huge thing I te- tell people because mm-hmm. they'll be stressed out. They're like, oh, like I can't get it. And then like. You know, when you're like a wheelie and you're like coasting and sometimes the bike will do like a little death wobble type thing. I see people fight it and that's like, you're just messing up everything. Like the bike's eventually going to straighten out. Just kind of don't fight whatever the bike's doing. Let it do what it's going to do. Like you're in control of it, but you're also not going to control where that thing's going to go in that moment. Because you're overcorrecting. You're over-correcting. And by the time you overcorrect, it's too late. Yep. And then now it's all fucky. Yep. Eventually you can, you'll get the wobble or you get the hop. It'll straighten itself out. You'll be able to keep going. Hmm. Just don't overthink it or just don't think at all. Have you ever wrecked really bad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had a lot of wrecks. I, my first like two years of stunt riding, I didn't wreck. I also didn't really know that many tricks. And then. You didn't wreck your first two years of stunt riding. What'd you learn on? An FXR. It was Uh, an old class. You learned how to wheelie on an FXR. Yeah. No dirt bike, nothing? Oh, well, okay. Okay. I answered that question wrong. I learned how to wheelie on a KLX 125L. Okay. Um,. I wrecked the crap out of that thing all the time. But that was like back when you could get a bike for a thousand dollars and then sell it for a thousand dollars. Like pit bikes were never more than like fifteen hundred dollars. They were always they were just super cheap. Anyone can own them. And so I'd like buy one, beat the piss out of it, sell it, get away from the bikes a little bit, beat the piss out of it again. I didn't like jumping things. I had friends who like like doing dirt jumps and stuff. I don't I don't belong in the air. Simple so who that. got you into doing wheelies on it? myself you're just, just yeah hanging out with those guys, dirt bike guys and then you just decided to wheelie because you didn't like jumps yeah i had a long driveway uh back home i had like a really long driveway i was like all right like i'm just gonna learn how to wheelie for fun because i'm not gonna be doing going to the track or doing things with them so i would just have fun on my own and then end up going bigger uh i got a super moto when i was 16 i got a drz 400 that was super fun i wrecked really bad on that one time that was cool um, doing a wheelie doing a wheelie i had like my backpack like coming home from school i had like a brand new sweatshirt on doing a wheelie <laughs> i looped out and the handlebar got stuck in the strap and it dragged me like 200 300 feet and i get up and i'm like somehow in front of the bike like in front of the front tire and i'm like looking at this guy and he's cutting his grass he just looked at me and shook his head and like just, kept, just kept going i'm like <laughs> I pick it up the bike. I'm like, oh, man, I broke the shifter. I had to like shift like with my hand in order to get home, rode home and just laid in the backyard. I was like, oh, I'm hurting. Sammy, you've been wheeling since you were 16. 
like actually really good at wheelies yeah since i was like 16 how long have you been riding i don't know i don't know since i was like 12 shit who your parents bought your bike my parents bought me yeah my first like dirt bike yep dope and then after that i was like buy sell your dad ride or something my dad rides harleys oh yeah yep so So, he's like okay you're gonna learn how to ride on this dirt bike yeah i hated harleys when i was 16 i was like i was like "Ah, that's an old man bike (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's just I, I don't know I had that young mentality mindset so, so when do you switch to Harleys I sold the sold the supermoto when I was like 17 18 and then I think I was like 20 years old and I saw an unknown video I was like you know I'm really good at wheelies I'm like I can do that and I was like that's pretty cool like I've never seen Harleys do wheelies and then now we're here I uh, just went after it. The first year, I had no idea what I was doing. It took me like good six months just to like really figure out how to like pick up the bike. But I was also trying to figure out what parts to buy. So you were doing this by yourself. Yeah. You didn't have any friends doing Harley wheelies or um, actually I, in the stunt scene. Like, did you know it was a thing? We I had like a group of friends, but we also had we didn't know anyone else. So it's like we were just kind of just starting. Like, what parts do we buy? So they got a Harley things. too? They all had Harleys, yep. I had one friend do the seven eight bars just because he liked dirt bikes. Uh-huh. So he's like, oh, I'll go to that. But uh, we had really no idea what we were doing. Like we knew to get a saddleman. We knew like we needed different bars. But like my first bar was like a solid T bar. It was like a 12 inch bar. I'm like, I'm a small dude. I'm wheeling the like handlebars like all the way up to like my eyes. I'm like way back versus in front of me. So like I had to go through that whole learning curve and everything. Yeah. So it was hard. I also had no idea how to work on bikes at all. And I did not have the money to pay for people to work on bikes. So you had to learn. I had to learn. I actually moved towns and I met this guy and he taught me like everything. Within like the first two weeks of knowing him, like my FX I was clapped when I first like moved to the new town. We pulled the motor, did like every, like just changed all the gaskets. He taught me everything all within one day. And then it's like I learned a lot just then mm-hmm. and there. And then watching YouTube videos too. Yeah. But don't fully listen to the YouTube videos because a lot of people also don't know what they're doing. They're just filming. Yeah. They're just filming. Yeah. A lot of times um, you're learning while you're filming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Bruce will be like, well, that didn't work. You're like, oh, so that's how he did it. Now, is, does the gasket go here or there? Like. <laughs> Yeah, right. I watched one guy do push rods. He completely forgot to put the bottom gasket in. And I was like, I'm going to watch the rest of the video. See if he ends see what up happens. Like, see what happens. I'm like, all right, I already know what to do. Like he messed up, but it was kind of funny. That is funny. Oh man. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Um, so how did you get in the stunt scene after that? Um, so the friends that, I, that had Harleys were doing wheelies and stuff. They kind of didn't take it as serious as me. I really enjoyed it. I had a really good time. I loved the feeling of doing wheelies and just having fun, smiling, being with my friends. They didn't really, we kind of grew apart type of deal. I mean, I moved towns. It was a lot harder to like hang out with them. And uh, I had this kid like message me on Instagram. His name was like Dylan No Fear. And I still talk to him to this day. We were still great friends. And I ended up meeting this group down at the lot. And then we just hit it off. And it was so fun. It was, it was almost like a brotherhood. The it's like a little stunt team called Star Society. Mm-hmm. Love that team. They're amazing people. We throw on a. You ever hear Broward on top? Mm-mm. It's a huge ride out in Florida. Like we're, that team, my buddy Sal, he throws that on with I think Sloppy. And so like that's pretty cool. But they made it really helpful. They kind of took me in. I did like my first show with them. Oh. Um, it was just able to like, it was very supportive. It's like, all right, these guys are taking stunt riding very seriously, but also at the same time, we don't really care to like get famous, get sponsors, you know, all that. Like that wasn't even in my mind yet. I'm like, I just want to be able to hand drag. Like my friend's hand dragger. like, I don't want him to be the only one. Yeah. So it's like, I just want to get to my friend's level. And then like, we'll each learn a trick and they'll be like, all right, what's next? What's next? And it was super cool. Is this before or after social media? This is during social media. Oh, that was media. during, he this hit, during hit you up media. on Instagram. Yep. Yep. So like Dylan really opened me up to like the stunt world, which was really cool. And you've been hand dragging for a long time. Yeah. I learned. Before it was cool. When, after like I built, 
I didn't really know how to like wheelie the Harley, my FXR until I built it. And then I learned a lot of tricks that first year. Like I learned hand drags, I learned uh, throttle hand drags, I learned no throttle co- like coasters, whole bunch of tricks. So was like it because seat of stand s- combos. Was it because of your setup or seat time? Seat time. And I think like a little bit of like messing around in my like my yard, my like driveway mm-hmm. and just crashing all the time. Like taking those tricks, I do come from like the supermoto slash dirt bike, like wheelie scene a little bit. So it's like, I have like that style and I know what they do. So it's like, I kind of brought that to like the Harley and I had a blast doing it, but I learned everything super quick. Yeah, that's dope. And then all these new tricks, I'm seeing all these killers and I'm just like, man, I need to step up my game. Are you going to start riding a lot more? Uh, I was like, ri- what's your plan? I was riding a lot more. And then, uh, I took a break. I got a little frustrated. Why? To, just like, I don't know. There's just a lot going on in my life. So I was just like, you know, I'm going to take a break. I was riding like every other day. But then I was like, you know, I, I don't want like this to interview, like intervene with my, you know, my actual life. Cause it's a lot, you know, you, you'll be at work and like, oh, I got to ride. I got to ride. It's like, no, I, I, I got to pay bills. All right. <laughs> You like start obsessing yes, and it does take over your life when you want to, when you're at the point where you're like in your prime and you're trying to progress, you have to write a lot, a lot, a lot. And when you get in your head and you're always thinking about it, you're not going to, you're not going to progress. The lot is always there. You know, like when I tell people, I bring people, I'm like, listen, like you don't do You don't need to do amazing today. We all have our bad days. Like it's always going to be here. There's always going to be another day. Mm -hmm. Like don't stress of that you're not going to get this trick yeah so just take take your time yeah i've learned like i just ride like once a week now and that's how i first started and that's how i learned everything and i find myself not having as many bad days i'll spend like a lot longer at the lot for that one day versus going to small interviews Mm -hmm. because it's like you go to a lot for an hour and you just feel off you're like i'm not hitting anything that's going to mess with you the next time you go to a lot like oh I wrote trash. Yeah, like, it yeah, almost I'm fucks off. with your ego. Yes. Like, uh, versus, you know, you're not riding as much. You're able to think about, you know, how can I do this trick? And then, you know, kind of slowly perfect, like, your style and your tricks and your riding. Do you think that works for you because you're already good? Versus, like, someone that's learning? Because how much did you ride initially when you were learning how to wheelie? When I was learning how to wheelie, I rode, like, every day. Like but also, how I was many able to, hours per day? Like two hours a day. Something See? like that every day. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's everyone. But it's like I had a pit bike and I had a long driveway. So it was like, what? Else? and I lived in a small town. I was like, what else was I going to do? You know? Yeah. So it just gave me something to do. And I ended up picking it up and really liking it. So are you trying to like balance your life? You said you get, got into dancing and shit and like figure out how to balance your life with stunt riding and make, still continue to progress in stunt riding, but also maintain other things and yeah it's the the, finding the balance is really hard dancing has definitely taken like a lot of like my life for sure like i don't i don't really sleep anymore (laughs) is it because you want to progress and uh i compare the two scenes they're very similar we were talking about this very similar it's insane to me because i'm like looking at i'm like it's just not as like big i mean there's definitely dancers we'll talk to other dancers in different states it's the same thing with like stunt riding like i have friends in all these different states and i can go there and go to this event go to this ride and i can stay at their house and everything it's cool but uh i was just take kind of slowing down like the bike thing i was kind of getting bored kind of getting sick of like drama and stuff so i was like all right like i want to try getting something else and so i found another thing and i really liked it and then that was like wow this is hard because I felt like riding came really easy to me just because I wasn't too hard on myself. Like, I'd be like, oh, I need to get this. I'm there. And I'm like seeing people dance. I'm like, I need to get that. Really? So it's been really hard for me. Yeah. It's, it's almost like learn how to wheelie all over again. So do you think the reason why maybe you're losing interest in stunt riding is because it's not hard anymore? Like you're already past the beginner's phase because I notice I enjoy things. I l- enjoy being a beginner. Mm-hmm. I enjoy sucking. Like it sucks to suck, but it sucks. it's actually fun. It's very fun. It's the funnest time of, the funnest time I had in stunt riding was when I was learning how to wheelie. And at the time I didn't know it was the best times of, of my life mm-hmm. because I'm fucking crying in my helmet. But 
now looking back, I'm like, that was the most fun I've ever had. I was trying yeah. to catch Idol and Balance Point, you know? Mm -hmm. Hit my first hand drag. I was so hyped. Like, yeah. It was cool. Um, you think it's like that? I I think that was kind of it. I was like, man, like, what else can you do? You know what I mean? But then I, like, kind of stopped and I was, like, able to look at, at it in a different way. I was like, all right, like, maybe this, like, I was thinking, like, all right, there's a cap. How many tricks can you do with just a foot break? You know what I mean? And I was like, you know what? I kind of want to figure out how many tricks you can do with just a foot break. I want to push the scene to see how far you can just go on basically a stock bike. So it's just like, I'm trying to invent these tricks. I still have these tricks. You see the people in like Brazil? Insane. They're in flip-flops. I don't even know what they're doing. They're like holding their handlebars with their legs. I'm like, I want to do that. I want to bring that, but put that to a Harley. Yeah. I like to like almost make up a trick, see what I can do, and then watch. And I love seeing people try it and do it. So what tricks have you made up? I wouldn't say made up, but like side tail hand drag. Mm -hmm. Um, the foot above the handlebar and then hand drag. I, I just tried like that one day. Like this? Like I was like, yeah. And I was like, all right, hand drag it. It's super sketchy, but it was like, it ended up working. I, I think it took me like two tries. Um, I've been working a lot with side saddle. It's like side saddle, no throttle hand coaster. That's a terrifying trick. I really want to get better with that one, but the only thing holding you on is your hand. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, your body's like, as soon as you let go, your, your body wants to go to the left because, and then all your weight's on the right. So your bike goes right. Your body goes left. You're like almost getting peeled off the bike sideways. So how do you not fall? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you just do. I just do. I like, and people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> just try it. <laughs> just fucking just try go. it. Yeah. Like, and there's like certain tricks I can't do. Like a lot of people will be surprised. Limiter coaster terrified i have no desire to do that trick at all it's super cool congrats i'm not gonna do it it's not my thing <laughs> i crashed so hard doing a limiter coaster i think like the first two months i moved to arizona i was like just learning no handers on the dyna like getting them down I'm, like cool then i did like a couple of limiter coasters i'm like oh no way did a no hander went in for a limiter coaster i'm like off limiter let go of the clutch oh shit. just boom just right on my back i was really? like yep I'm like, I went to, I was going to MMI at the time, I'm like hobbling in, I like showed up like an hour late. My friend's like, what, what did, what happened to you? I oh, said, Tony, you don't even want to know. You wouldn't even understand. <laughs> you don't even want to know. Yeah. I get home, like banging my, my frame back straight, oh, try to get my fender back into normal. Yeah. So you think you got in your head with that one? Yeah. I think that one's a very like, are you kind of got to think about when you're doing that trick? Yeah. Just cause like. If you do like go the clutch a little early or if your clutch slips, oh, it's a high risk. It's cool. And it, uh, not really a big reward for me. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's definitely a crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. I wish I had that trick. But I'm no, you're good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good on that. How do you get over those mental blocks? <sighs> like after you crash, you get really nervous to wheelie. You just got to force yourself. You got to force yourself. Like, I have been battling a mental block with the double hand drag for over a year now. I can't do it. Really? I mean, like, I've been talking and riding with Dom. Dom's just, that's a magic man right there. He does it. He pulls a wheelie and then does a double hand drag on 30 feet. I'm over here like, how? How do you do that? And, like, you got to stretch. You got to do it. And it's not that difficult of a trick. But when you, like, think about it, it's like, all right, get the wheel up, drop back, now let go. And now reach in the opposite direction of the bike. Like everything about that trick is like not, not what you're supposed to do on a bike at all. So it's like, you're trying to do it. You're like, no, I'm going to fall off. So that's really been a main thing with me. And because I'm a little bit shorter, I got short arms. It's harder for me to like reach for the ground. You have to go deeper. I got to go deeper. Yeah. And I don't got like a fender to like kind of catch myself on. Yeah, yours is cut. Yeah, so I got to, like, really use the brake. And then my rear brake setup is kind of sketchy. Why? Uh, I don't like my brakes to work that well, if that makes sense. So they're not as touchy? They're not as touchy. Um, you really got to apply pressure in order to, like, fully, like, lock up the rear tire. But I like that because then you can control your the amount of pressure you put into the rear brake in a wheelie. So you can be a lot more, like, f precise with your brake control. So how do you set your bike, your foot brake up to be like that? You just don't bleed it? I just don't bleed it that, that well. <laughs> oh my yeah. God, Sammy. Yeah. 
I was doing breaks one time and that I, is ca- sketchy. Yeah, I called Derek. I'm like, listen, how do I make my breaks worse? <laughs> He's like, what? He's like, what do you, what, what do you mean? I'm like, do I, do I just put an air bubble in this thing? Like, I don't like, I hate a break where it's like, it barely even pushes down and it's locking up. Yeah. I can't do that. I don't know how people do that. Mine. I'm like, I like having full play, full motion. That's just squishy. Me. Squishy. I like really squishy. Squishy. And I think that also has to do with like, I don't have new parts on my bike at all. I think I'm running the same rotor from 2001. Is that because you don't like change? I don't like change. And also it's just like, I'll just freshen it up with Scotchbrite pad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Like I have takeoff rotors, like I can yeah. put them on, but I'm like, mm. why? It's, it's working, you know. Yeah. You technically should replace a rotor once when you replace your brake pads, but no, I'm not. Why? Doing that. It's expensive. I don't. You know what? Someone told me that. I never really asked why. So now I'm really thinking about that. I don't know. Well, that's kind of like a stator and voltage regu- regulator. If your stator went, you should probably replace your voltage regulator, even though it's gone. Like it's fine, you know. So. If you do one thing, you should do the other, just yeah. maintenance wise. But I don't know why you should do that. You know what's crazy? How you say you're just not into the handrake? It scares you, right? Mm-hmm. How everyone has that one trick mm-hmm. that just yeah either they just can't mentally get themselves to try or do, or they've had a bad accident and they won't yeah go near it again. Which is crazy because I'll go through like. I'll do like go really deep. I'll drag my whole arm on the ground. Yeah. I'll do all these cool tricks that are super like technical and scary, but I can't go into balance point, pull my clutch in and just like bang limiter. Like I'm terrified of letting go. Or was it sideways in uh, the Vegas brawl? He was doing limiter coaster down. I think it was like three years ago and this clutch slipped and it literally landed on top of him. His bagger too. That's a big bike to land on top of you. Holy so I'm also shit. worried about that. Do you think it's because he saw that and yeah. it really fucked you up in your head? And yeah. now every time you think, even think about doing that trick, yeah. you envision sideways. It's like, it's so simple, but it's so easy to go wrong. So it's just like, like you said, it's not a high payout. Yeah. It's not a high, high enough payout for me. I like, being a little bit different too so i don't want to do that it'd be super cool i wish i could pull up and be like trent and just like (laughs) limiter coaster going down for my first wheelie in the brawl but it's like i can't do that i'm not gonna do that so everyone has their own tricks everyone has their own style you'll find your style you will find your style yeah but it's cool i i'm all set on that trick (laughs) that trick terrifies me yeah so what are you working on next you said you're looking uh for inspiration I'm getting like inspiration from like the Brazilian scene and like what they're doing. So right now I'm trying to take my left foot, hook it on the right handlebar, kind of by the throttle and then lean back. And then I want to do like a no hands, like crossed arms. I really want that trick so badly. I've seen those like uh, people doing it on bicycles. On bicycles, like everything. I've never seen it on a Harley. No. I, want to, I want to do it so badly. Dude, that'd be sick. It's very sketchy. Um, just cause my handlebars are a little closer to me. So I don't have like a fully locked out leg. So my legs a little crunched in and then, uh, my cables. Wait. And so that's on your throttle. Yeah. On my throttle side. So I have throttle oh, that's cables, even more sketchy. front brake. Like I get like stuck in there. So getting out of it too is also really hard. So it's like, I've definitely been overthinking that trick a lot, but you know, how do you bail out of that? You don't. <laughs> Why do they? Why do those Brazilian guys just don't give a fuck? In flip flops too, you know. No fucks given, and they're having the time of their life. That guy was playing a guitar, doing a no hander. I'm like, who are these dude, guys? I love that dude. <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny because everyone tagged you in it. Yeah. Yeah, he reminds me of you. It's just funny, like he's <laughs> yeah. never a good time, but he's killing it. <laughs> yeah, just fucking murdering it. Yep. It's crazy. <laughs> like that takes a lot of skill. Okay, so one time I pulled out my phone with one hander and took a picture of myself. Yeah. And just that is so fucking hard to do two things at once. Yep. I can even not imagine playing a guitar with both my hands. No. And doing a wheelie at the same time. No. I could never. <laughs> I could never. But you're good at doing two things at once. Yeah. You're good at doing a yeah. wheelie and something else. I like being different. I like trying things that no one else is really doing. Like people can like record while doing wheelies. That's cool. Like do a hand drag, drag your phone. I'm like, what if I do like no handers? I just stare at the camera. Yeah. And then that like 
I was like, man, that's kind of cool. And then and like that video went like, I wouldn't say viral, but it blew up. And I got like a bunch of like recognition for that. And then I did it again. And I was like, it still blew up again. I was like, wow, like, it's super, it's, it's cool. I'll record things. I'm like, oh, this would be a cool story. Or like, this would just be a cool video. And then I'm like, eh, I don't really know if I should post it. And it's always that video that you post. And you're like, wow, this just got like 100,000 views. Yeah. It's crazy. That's me with just sitting on my bike. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because you know how chicks, they'll, they'll post a video of them just sitting on their bike like this. Mm -hmm. And they'll get like thousands and thousands of views. I'm like, man, I think I'm really overthinking this content thing. Because all I got to do is sit on my bike and, and just go. Yep. So I've been, sorry, I've been posting some shit like that. When, <laughs> when I don't have any wheelie videos, I'm just like, fuck it. Just to keep my page active. Yeah. But, Sammy, please, can we do a video of you wheeling, holding something like a guitar? I have a friend in Colorado and he really wants me to do a, do you, it's like, it's the audio, like, let him cook. I don't know. <laughs> he did a video and he's like mixing like a bowl up of like ramen. And then like, you see him like flip it and it's like, let him cook, let him cook. He's doing no handers the whole time. Damn. And he's, doing those, he's like, you need to do that. I'm like, no. <laughs> okay. So what's but your thing going to be though? We got to come up with something like that's, I don't that's, know. That's Sammy. I, I have no idea what is different. You know, the thing is like, take something, what people are doing, but then be different. Yeah. Add your style. You got it, dude. You, there's got to be something. Like I'm known for being like a little bit of a goon. So I'm going to try to like expand with that. Yeah. And see where it goes. I don't know. I don't know we how gotta to put something in your mind. hands though. I know. I know. Like, what, but what? <laughs> I really want to do the let him cook thing. I think that's funny. Do the let him cook. <laughs> yeah. Do the let him cook. But then I got to find the audio. Good luck finding that audio. <laughs> it's been a while. Oh, yeah. Is it on Instagram? Yeah. Steal the audio from him. It's Paul so hard, I think. I don't know. I don't, I'm Send still, it to me and I'll put it in the podcast. still hitting me in the head. I, I, I'll put it in the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I'll get it. But I don't know. I'm just trying to be different. Trying yeah. to really push the scene. I like, see, I like doing a trick and then watching people try them. Yeah. I let's like I'm like cool like people are actually like watching my videos and I'm like oh like, like you're paving the way yeah you're inspiring people oh uh, yeah basically I, I would love say that, that. About it's cool you. it's super That's, cool I like helping people a lot I really enjoy like I love learning a new trick I love progression mm -hmm. but I also love watching people progress and if I can help you in any way like awesome like I'll teach you a simple trick and it'll make a world I know how it feels. So it's like to see them go through it, it's like, yes. And they're also doing it something that like I do. So it's like super cool. What um what progression of tricks do you think someone can do? So after they learn how to wheelie, what's the next trick? And then the next you know how it like you build on tricks? I would I would say like learning like I wouldn't consider it to be a trick, but like bar locking. Bar locking and grabbing the tank. Cause that's gonna set you up for so many tricks. And I've like, I saw like one of the East Coast and guys just like riding a wheelie like that. I was like, okay, like I'll just do that. Like that looks comfortable and it being super comfortable. And then I was able to learn hand drags, no handers, no throttle hands, throttle hand, um, throttle hand drags. Like it opens up a world for you mm. just cause you get the, the whole feeling of doing a one hander, but you're still connected to the bike. I love that. Yeah. That's good. That's like my number one like tip for people is like. Learn bar locking and the left hand on the tank. So it's almost like just learn it as if it's a normal wheelie. Yes. Yep. It also would really get you comfortable with your brake because you have to be good. Yes. Yep. Like I'll, I'll be, I'll be teaching people like, all right, like you want to learn how to hand drag, mm -hmm. do this. Like I've taught like five, six people how to hand drag and, uh, I taught them that and then they'll get comfortable. They'll like drop back, scrape, like doing the whole bar lock tank ground thing. And then just start reaching down for the ground. And then like within like two lot sessions, they're hand dragging, which is pretty cool. Holy shit. Yeah, it's really cool. That's dope. But it's like as soon as like, I don't know, for me with stunt riding, as soon as like you like really learn the basics, everything's just going to start clicking. Yeah. Everything. Because it's, it's all the same. It's all within the same. Cover, cover your brake. Don't mm -hmm. fall. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's like. And then progression wise, like doing these tricks that no one's like really doing, they're really not that, they look really hard. They are hard. They're definitely difficult, but it's just a variation of two tricks put together. 
So you mentioned Becca's your best friend. Yes, Becca's my best friend. Have you coached her? Um, I definitely like helped her out with a couple things, like style wise. She was doing side saddle before I was, and then uh, so I was like, oh, I need to try that. So we kind of battled a little bit with it, and uh, we help each other out a lot. She was trying to get into drifting, so I was like, all right, like we'll run these tires, and we figure out like what tire that she likes. How do you think her mind as a chick works differently? I don't know. I don't like, well, like, what do you mean? Like, do you think that, well, maybe I was going to say maybe she's an overthinker because I feel like women are way overthinkers, but then again, you're an overthinker, so you might not notice. I, I don't, I don't know. I know like she definitely gets nervous at times and will overthink things for sure. Like certain tricks, but it's like, I know you can do it. Like I've seen like your capabilities, like as a rider, like there's things she can do that I cannot do. Like, um, riding sport bikes, at FZ. Mm -hmm. I cannot ride an FZ to save my life. I no that, that shit kills it. Kills it. I'm like, you are 10 times better a rider than me. The street like, bikes are hard. Very hard. Very hard. I can't do it. I think, I think it's the whole seating and barbs. Like, Cause then we we'll go back to bar setup. I'm like, I'm used to bars being up mm -hmm. here. I'm not leaning forward. I'm a lot more of a relaxed rider. I like to be calm, almost look effortless when I yeah, ride. Yeah. That I feel like that's aggressive. Maybe I need to switch up my bar setup. I, I feel like they're kind of wide. You're probably running like 32 inch wide. Did you cut your bars at all? No. You've got some wide bars, son. I haven't looked at them yet. They're they're moved in more. The grips are moved in more. There's like a little bit sticking out on the edge, but I don't know where you set it up for me. <laughs> I'm still trying to dial in my new Dyna <laughs> and I'm figure a, it all out. I'm a small dude. I like things to be a lot easier for me to be there. Um, you ride the big Dyna though. I love that bike. I love that bike. I really want to get a road glide just to be like, all right, I can do this. Low life. I didn't really want a road glide, and then low life posted that video of him pulling up to the gas station. This was like really recent and like throwing a slushy at it. I don't know why that trend's going on, but he did it. I'm like, man, that is a badass bike. Like, I really want one. Just to like cruise around on, but I could also like do like knee knocker swears and stuff and like hand drags on. But I wouldn't feel the need to wheelie at every single street, you know? Yeah. Versus the dyna, it's like, I need to fool around on this thing. I think uh, the road glide's like a retirement re retirement man's bike. Yeah. Because... Yeah. All you got to do is the basic fucking wheelie. It's still cool. It's yeah, still exactly. Fun. You don't have to do anything on it. Yeah. They're just so expensive. <laughs> they're expensive as shit. We were just talking about they're that very off camera. Big. And they're a different setup. Like, I guess you run a softer rear spring versus a diner. You run, like, a really hard spring. Like mm, I don't know. I, I was told, like, almost, like, run, like, a, was it the 110 in the back for a bagger versus I'm running a 150 on my diner. Hmm. I don't know why. I don't have the answer for that. But that's strange. That's what I was told. Dude, the beggars are kind of easy. Are they? They're, once you get in a wheelie, Bruce's motor is, oh my gosh. I don't know what he did to it, but <laughs> it clutches up like a street bike. It's so easy. It's yeah. easier than my Dyna to wow. clutch up. But once you're in a wheelie, it just goes straight. It's so big. It's it so heavy. It just sits there. doesn't want to go there. side to side. Yeah. I feel like the heavier and bigger the bike, the easier it is to ride. To ride. And the throttle turn is wider. Yeah. So, like, you have more room to fuck up. There's mm -hmm. more play. Yeah. Um, I've never ridden a bagger. I feel like the floorboards would be, like, the biggest thing for me. I'd probably have to, like, do, do the mid controls. controls. Yeah, I'm sure. going to do that on my bagger. Yeah. I like the look, too, better. Really? I it, like the floorboards. They're comfortable. Sick. It's like dad status right there. <laughs> Floorboard. Dude, up. you know I can't barely reach the foot brake <laughs> when my fo other foot is on the ground? I feel like you're also hovering with like the foot brake because you can't like, you're not flat level with it's it. So I see far. people like literally almost off the ground and it's like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. And then when I switch, I have to switch all the way my whole body like this to touch the ground and I can barely with my toe. Kick it into first gear. <laughs> it <Anyways>. happens. <laughs> it's short people problems. You yeah, know for saying? real. <laughs> <laughs> How I, tall are you? I am five foot eight. I actually get asked that question like a lot. Really? I like to say five ten. 
Yeah. Okay, but round yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, fair enough. Blue. I'll say five, we'll say five nine. Five nine. And a half. Yeah. But like five eight and a half. M- mainly five eight for sure. <laughs> mainly. How <laughs> yeah. are you gonna be mainly five eight? <laughs> Just someday. Depending on what shoes you're wearing or what. Yeah, for sure. Am I in cowboy boots? Five nine. Five nine. Oh, and a half. okay. Fair enough. Five ten. Cowboy. Vans? Do you ride in your cowboy b- boots ever? No. You should, no. dude. I don't want to destroy them. They're expensive. <laughs> I know. Get some cheap, Vans, get Vans some cheap burners. I get. I go to like. I go to discount stores. I buy used shoes. I don't buy new shoes just because they're just so expensive. I'm not spending eighty dollars on dude, a pair of shoes just to blow through them. That's what we do for riding shoes. You want to get we, used shoes? Yeah, we go to Uptown Cheapskate. I'm gonna go hit up like Plato's Closet after this. Check out Uptown Cheap Cheapskate. Where, where is there? it? No. Just Google it. <laughs> Don't ask me directions. It's not I, my... I got like my, my stores and I'm like, all right, like I know there's going to be some places yeah, here. Yeah, Uptown Cheat Skate's more uh, high end than Plato's Closet. I like Plato's Closet because it's kind of like, it's like, oh, that's a chick store. So not a lot of guys go oh, there. Oh, and they buy. And so it's like, there's a lot of guy stuff. So yeah, it's like, because everyone's like, oh, no, there's nothing there for us. And I show up, I'm like, wow, there's everything here. Yeah, this Uptown Cheapskate has, like, more brand name shit. Like, expensive stuff, but it's cheap. They got, like, I need some, like, more shirts. I'm, yeah, they, I'm have, my... they have everything. Hmm. They have everything. My problem, and I noticed this with stunt riding, is that all stunt riders' clothes is all stunt riding clothes. Like, like every stunt rider just has, like, really shirts or, like... It's a brand shirt. You're like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I need to switch it up a little bit. You know, maybe not wear something that has to deal with riding. Yeah. Even though it's a huge part of my life. It's like, eh, I kind of want to get different clothes. Get, wear a different style. Yeah. As much as I like supporting friends and companies, yeah. I mean, I'm like, maybe I want to wear something else. Totally. It's just all my clothes are like black t-shirt. <laughs> all right. So now we're going to get to the audience questions. You oh, ready? Yes. You have some on your phone too, right? Yeah. I sent them to you though. Did you get them? I sent them to you on Instagram. Oh, you did? Okay, I'll check. Yeah. What bike do you have? Is it hard? I know what you're in. Yeah, How that was a weird question. <laughs> yeah, that's just... I can't ask that twice. <laughs> did you? By two different people? Yeah. What the fuck? We're going to have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, Gary wants to know how big are those balls? For you, Gary? Wait, which one is the camera that I can stare into? Massive. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to learn to wheelie and what was the tip that made it happen? Um, to like learn balance point on like learn wheelies in general or like Harley wise. I'm going to assume this guy's probably learning on a Harley. Zippy fast. F X S T. Okay. Harley. Harley wise very difficult because I wouldn't compare wheeling like a pit bike to a Harley. They're both. They're so hard. Like I could wheelie a dirt bike, but I couldn't wheelie a Harley. Um, Took me like six months. After transitioning from the pit bike to the Harley? Yeah. It was just, it's really heavy. It's the whole timing with the clutch drop and like moving your body wise. Um, because at first I used to have to like do like what Trent does. He was saying in the last podcast, like he like yanks back. Um, just getting that time and motion down while also dropping the clutch took me forever to figure out. Yeah. But like now with the dyno, I don't need to do that at all. It that becomes your natural right reaction. Up. Yeah, it just comes right up. So it's just like learning your whole timing and body motion being, you know, having everything flow at once is really hard, especially when you're learning because you're scared. Yeah, the bike isn't really intimidating. It's very intimidating. It's Even loud. if you know how to wheelie. Yeah, it's really loud. You're like, damn, this is a 650-pound motorcycle, 700-pound motorcycle, like, it's massive. This thing goes down. Like, I have thousands of dollars into this. I'm like, mm-hmm. this thing goes out. It's not going to go down easy. <laughs> so it's very intimidating. But just take your time, I guess. Yeah, uh, I would say, I would say like, if you already know how to wheelie, trust me, once you hit balance point, you will be fine. Yeah, the Harley is very, I'm not going to say it's easy to wheelie. It's very hard to pick up when you're first learning. But, like, once you get balance point, the balance point is huge. You have so much room to play around in it's really you'll get comfortable and then they'll start clicking for you like really fast yep and then you'll just progress quickly from there very quickly but getting to that balance point is very very intimidating (laughs) 
Why did you get a lot of ball questions? I don't know. <laughs> and Jordy motherfucking wheelies asks, where do you keep your balls? Because they're definitely too big to fit in your jeans. <laughs> Um, was it worth it, worth getting out of New England and moving across the country? Would you do it again? So yeah, this is um, this is a huge question. Yes, uh, New England. Yeah, I was from Massachusetts, so it's just like oh okay. I moved out here basically for Harley's. Like really, just got up, took all my like, took my things. Like obviously, I'm still like still talk to like my family. Like my parents are moving out here in a couple months, which is really cool, but. I really wanted to go and chase like the Harleys. So I moved all my things and now I'm here. And then, then I started getting recognition like for doing wheelies and everything out here, which is really cool. So you came to chase, chase your dreams. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just really wanted to get really good, like at riding and like, I wanted to do the competitions. I wanted to like hang out with these people. I wanted to, you know, so actually see what it's like. You know, I didn't want to just be stuck home in the East coast cold you got your seasonal depression i love it there it's really nice i love the seasons but you're very limited to what you can do there because you know you have winter time and it's raining a lot like springtime that's the mud season it rains every week so it's just like being out here you have way more of a possibility to grow and just kind of prove yourself because you want to think about all your all the companies are like California, Arizona, like Colorado. They're all Vegas. Like they're all out here. So it's easier to interact and do everything out here. Um, I would totally do it again. That was like the best decision I've made in my life. It's also like a very hard decision. Um, I used to not be independent. And now I'm very much so like on my own and it's been a very big learning experience and it's definitely been shaping me, but, uh, it's, it's been going amazing. So I, what were you looking for? Hmm. I truly, I don't know. I, I just wanted to, I knew I wanted to get out of mass. That was like my number one goal. Um, I just was looking for like life experiences like opportunity opportunity um see what else is out there and you know chase things along the way i wanted to i never thought i'd ever get this far with the harleys like the fact that i'm doing a podcast with you right now is like mind-blowing i just thought i was just gonna do a hand drag and then i was like i'm done now i'm in arizona doing podcasts with you doing the brawls doing like it's like insane to me still it's crazy. The opportunity is huge. Huge. Um, so is that how it changed your life? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I'm definitely the same Sam, for sure. Like, all a bunch of my friends from, like, back in the East Coast are like, no, nah, you're still a goon. Like, you're funny. Like, yeah, I still have, like, my home connections, but it's like I'm very much so more independent. Um, very much so on my own out here. It's very challenging, but it's like, and then I'm, you meet people you know, and you have like these experiences and things, and you'll find out who's who and like what they're about. And it's cool. It's really cool. And you know, you talk to all these people on Instagram. It's like, like Jay Brew. Jay Brew is from like, like 45 minutes from where I grew up, which is crazy. Cause like he's from New Hampshire. I'm from like Northern Mass. And then he moved out here doing the whole bike thing, killing it. And then I moved out here and now it's like, we're doing competitions and stuff together but we'll go on instagram we'll talk about like snowboarding and like his mountain was my mountain and it's just crazy like we're thousands of miles away from like our hometown like hometown but like we had the same snow mountain though like ski mountain that we went to and you guys didn't know each other no idea no idea wow. but we could like talk about things like that it's crazy that's so cool so what made you choose arizona so it was either so i had to move out so i was i was going to mmi um it was either florida or arizona and I have a lot of friends in Florida, a lot of like Broward County, but that was like the school was in Orlando and no anyone in Orlando. And I consider it to kind of be more like street bike oriented, not as much of a Harley scene, like their Harley scene is growing for sure. But I, didn't, I wasn't near any of my friends. I knew like a couple people out here, but like also like never hung out with them. I also knew, like, this is, like, the capital of, like, Harley Stone, right, basically. 
I agree. Like, it's huge. I had huge. no idea. There's still people that show up to a lot that are like, Ryan, I'm like, who are you? I have like, a question. I, yes. What do you think about the stunt scene here? It's very interesting. Isn't it weird? It's very interesting. It's so weird. Um, I didn't know if it was just Bruce and I, but it's freaking weird here. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed. I kind of just stick to myself. Like Everyone I, does. I, yeah, I just like, and it's not like that back east. Same. I know everyone at the lot. Like, everyone's super friendly. Like, it's not like a competition. It's more of a build each other up. It's weird. It's really weird. And then you come out here and it's just separated I, I don't really yeah it's separated on us like it's almost like egos collide and so it's just i don't know it's weird how to change it like i love riding with bruce and uh like i'll go over i'll like walk over talk to you guys type of deal like but then it's just like it's weird it is so weird, weird. and and that's why we tried to have people over and bring everyone but we're so new we don't know who's not cool with who's not cool with who yeah and it's like Back home, we would we break bread with everyone in the sun scene, like everyone's family, you yep. know. And it's like going over, and having parties, doing like yeah, we events, we do we'll we do together. Christmas like together. Yeah. You you do you know, and it's just like everyone knows everyone's family, and it's like that. But here, it's like everyone's fucking strangers. It's so weird, and it's not like like even us you know yeah we're cool, mm-hmm. but it's not like we kick it yeah you know like my stunt team was like. We had people from Florida, um, Florida, Mass, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Even I had a friend in Martha's Vineyard who's absolutely killing it, by the way. I don't know if you know Stunt Gypsy. Mm -hmm. He Uh, dragged his seat on the ground. Savage. Am I going to have to have him on? He's a very interesting guy. He's amazing. <laughs> Love him. I like kind of helped him with his setup, and now he's like doing his own thing. He's absolutely killing it. I'm going to check him out. Yeah, for sure. You should check him out. Um, But it's like... We, we have people all over the town, like all over different states. And we're still hanging out together, doing these parties, doing these get togethers. And it's like we're in this like city, but no one's hanging out with each other. Everyone's very separated. I wonder. There has to be something. There's got to be a reason why. I don't know. Because like you said, it's the same dynamic from where you come from, where everyone's from different areas, mm-hmm. similar to like Phoenix. But... I'm just, I'm, I just, what I'm getting is like, that's the East Coast mentality and this is the West Coast mentality. I don't, I don't really know what else to even put it as. Well, I'm from Washington. That's Northwest. Is it, is it very, okay. Yeah, no, you just says very, I don't know no, then. I don't it's have It's fucking a, weird. It's, it's weird. We need to change that. It used to bug me and then like. It really bugs me. There's a lot of drama. <laughs> Maybe so that's why. What Dom told me, you know, it was like really good advice. And like, look at Dom. Dom lives two hours away now. So it's just like, he's like, just stay out of the drama and just do your thing. You know what I mean? Be friendly with people, do your own thing, but like kill it. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't even, I'll hit up a couple people that like go a lot, but most of the time I'll just show up because I know people are going to be there. So it's, maybe that's what it is. When did you move here? Two years ago. Like last two. month was like exactly two oh, years Oh, me too. Ago. Yeah. So we probably moved at the same time. Mm-hmm. So when... Maybe it's because we're so naive and we don't know all the drama behind the scenes. It's not like people are coming up saying, don't talk to him. Yeah. Don't talk to him. No, don't, yeah, no, you know, like and so you're hanging out with everyone and everyone's like, oh, fuck him then. Yeah. These you guys have saying? been in the scene for how many years? And then you're showing up all like. Like friends with everyone. Oh, what's up, guys? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know who you hate and, and why do I have to hate him too? Yeah, exactly. You know? So it's just, it's very, it's really weird. I've almost felt like, all right, I'm an outsider, but I'm fine with that. Yeah, I feel the same way, dude. It's I don't I don't care. I'm I'm there freaking weird. for a good time and to have fun. That's it. Yeah, I know. But I, I like wish, progression. I just don't like the. I wish it was closer. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. I mean, once when we have like the people like out of towners come in, it's a great time. Isn't that lot. weird? But it's still separated. That. Yeah. It's still separated because then it's like, all right, why aren't we all having like all the locals? hang out with everyone you know what i mean it's almost like we take the out-of-towners and, and then they will them. be separate we'll hoard them and there'll be even times where i can't even hang out with them i'm like i really want to ride with you guys i'm, I'm like know. i don't even know where you are well it's like i have a full-time job it's like i can't hang out with you so it's like really hard to time things like stretch will come in town and i work like 
five minutes away from here, not even. So it's like, I'll bring my bike and I was just like, all right, like, let's ride. Like, let's ride. Jesse Ryan will come down. Like, let's ride. Like, I just want to see people. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know. It's weird. It's so weird. I I feel the same way. I'm (laughs) glad it's not just us. That's no, I think everyone's the difference between last year and this year though. Huge. How so? It's just different vibes. Good or bad. I don't even know how to describe what, how it is right now last year was like awesome we would throw on like street rides everyone was more riding Mm -hmm. there was a lot more riding last year really versus this year it's like hmm you know like it's not the same people going to the same friday night rides you know what i mean i don't even know if we even do a wheelie wednesday anymore i mean i don't do them because i don't like riding streets but that's just me but i i know it's different different. is there even a mini monday anymore You're asking the wrong fucking person. That's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> You're asking the wrong <laughs> I am not involved with any street, anything. Yeah. No, I would definitely say if you live out like out east, though, like going back to the question, um, if you do feel the need to get out and explore and you have this opportunity, you can. And I think you should take it. Because what did Ryan Cruzy say? Like He's like, I went from talking to like all these people, like my heroes I looked up to, how this small town I moved and it's like now I'm riding with them I'm like really good friends like we're we're out eating pizza together it's mind-blowing yeah honestly though moving from Washington to Arizona for me has been a huge deal yeah more opportunity more shows more everything because not only can you pick up shows in Arizona California's right there Vegas is right there like everything is so close yes Yes. It's, that's what I like. I'm like, oh, I'm four hours from Vegas. Mm-hmm. I'm five hours from San Diego. It's like eight hours. I'm at four corners. You know what I mean? So it's so cool. Like, everything's everything's super close. Everything is like within under 10 hours of a drive. Yeah. Manageable. Is, yes. It's very manageable. And it's all different like scenes, but they're all so welcoming. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Like I love going to Cali. I should go out there more often, but, uh, like being near the ocean i grew up like 45 minutes from the ocean like i was like ah, i'm so sick of it like but now i've been out here i'm like man you know i kind of want to go and, like, i miss the water i kind of miss the water Same. a little bit <laughs> i miss water and grass i love like i love <laughs> yes i love going and doing like these bike events but i wish i was there for like a few more days because i feel like i'm going to this zone this like new area i've never been to i've never explored and i don't ever get to like really see it because I'm focused on like riding, I'm riding. like I want to like vacay. Th- let's go shopping. Like let's go. I want to go see the area. Let's go on a hike. Like yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, do some do some sightseeing. Yes, like I want to go hit the like what's some good like mom and pop like restaurants. Maybe that's what we explore. need to do. Yeah, like, maybe we can come together, <laughs> and when someone new comes into town, we can say, hey, let's go yeah. see. Exactly. Shit, I don't even know anything around Arizona yet either. Look, but we'll figure it out. Like I'm in <laughs> it for the experience. Like yeah. Four Corners this year, like camped in the field with like J Brew and everyone. Blast. Gotta live through that. It wasn't just about like, oh, I'm here for like a competition. Like I'm here for a good time. I'm here for experience. I want to see what it's like. They went sightseeing, but they 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 like rode their bikes. So I'm not riding my bike on <laughs> And that was a whole disaster. I'm not a long, I'm not a long distance yeah, I'm not rider. A, my bike's too clapped out. I don't want to bring that thing on a ride. <laughs> and the foot brake doesn't work. Yeah, I'm going to do like a scenic route and then get lost in the scenic route. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, a few more questions. Um, how are you so super chill and laid back in such a competitive environment? Bobby the Butcher wants to know. Ooh not overthinking um like 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 i said it's just like you're there with your friends you can't look at it as a competition i'm trying not to look at it as a competition like i'm i'm there like i'm like promoting sponsors and stuff but like at the same time it's like i would love to win i caught fifth place in san diego i never even expected that that blew my mind so it's like man like i actually do really well in these competitions but uh, I don't look at it as a competition. You know, you got those people who will take the competition seriously and they're sitting on the, like, the sideline or like they're by their truck and they're not talking to anyone. I'm up at the starting gate hyping everyone up. 
like trying and like let's go like i want to see this like trying to hype everyone up i want it to be more friendly versus like people getting their head battling each other like no yeah. we're friends do do guys have competition between each other like secretly yes i feel like yes like, um, like guys hating on each other and like i think that would be like it's like a oh he rides better than me or like i need to ride better than him type of deal but it's like you can't control that other than if you put in work and try to put in seat time. But at the same time, they have their style. You have yours. Like you, I like personally, I see myself with no style. People love my style. People love the smiles. People feed off the energy. I don't see any of that. I'm like, man, I'm making an ugly face right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's what people like. Um, there is a competition. Yes. And it's really hard to avoid. I think it's more of like an ego thing, but yeah. you gotta like, everyone gets into that state, but then, you'll finally realize it and you'll push yourself away from it and be like, okay, like I can do this differently. I don't know. It's really hard to explain. I think guys like have a hierarchy. Yeah. Like they want to have the biggest balls and apparently you do. Everyone, <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> Everyone wants to be number one. And uh, basically that's not going to happen. Whatever number one means. Yeah. What is man, number one? The, the guy's world because – you guys are like so good in different ways and it's so hard to be how do you be number one and you can't you can't i mean it's like you'll have someone the i like i was like uh i started out i was like floating in no hander like arms crossed looking at the crowd i'm like hyping everyone up i'm like man i did such a good run like mm -hmm. i'm killing it and then tazinski just comes out of nowhere and it breaks his helmet on the ground i'm like what? what what even was that <laughs> like i can't compete against that so it's like it's cool but uh I, um don't let don't get in your head just be with your friends be like dude my friend's killing it don't don't have an ego don't have like a like oh he's doing better than me like don't i be need jealous. to be better don't be jealous yeah don't be jealous dude jealousy will kill the fucking fun of stunt riding so quick bring it back to why you started I'm having fun mm -hmm. and like, and then just be thankful. Like, man, I'm here. I like, there's hundreds of people that killed to be in the spot that I'm in. Why am I going to be upset? Why am I going to be jealous in this? I should be thankful. I should be like, I'm, I'm friends with these people. Like I'm at a level I'd never thought I'd ever get to like, just be happy. You know what? I just popped in my fucking head. You know how we were saying it's fun to be a beginner. Maybe yeah. it's for that reason, because you're not competing when you're a beginner Yeah. because you know, you suck. You get this level of stress. It's like, oh, I have to perform. Yeah. Once you get better, you're like, oh. I have to stay better or be better than the next guy. Yeah. Just because you'll see a lot of good riders and like we will get in our heads. Like I've seen it happen to me. I've seen it happen to Dom. I've seen it happen to TJ. Like we'll be riding at the lot and we're not hitting our tricks that we want to hit and we're getting our head and we're getting upset. But it's like at the same time, it's like, you know, everyone has bad days. Um don't stress it just stay relaxed you know you're having fun you're out there with your boys like just have a good good time what do you do when you're frustrated do you end the day or do you keep going i try to like work out the cor the corks in it i'm like why am i doing so bad like it's it's the tire it's definitely the tire so you start blaming or what <laughs> yeah, i'll start but i'll play the blame game <laughs> <laughs> um sometimes i'll go home then i'll just be like all right this is an off day like i'll like usually sat I, I won't ride all week and then I'll go like out Saturday. And Saturday it will be like usually like an off day for me. And I'll be like, okay, like I'll only ride for like an hour today. Like I'm just getting the rust off. Yeah. Getting the rust off. Sunday Going back to the basics. Yeah. Sunday it's like all right, now I can like start getting comfortable again. And no matter what, you're gonna have like your off days. And they're frustrating. Just don't they think about it. Too suck. Much. Yeah. The more often you ride, the more often you're gonna have off days. Oh, you're right. Because you're riding more often. Yeah. So you're also going to have better, more good days too. Yeah. You're going to have seat time. Well, a lot of seat time, but you're also going to have a lot of bad days and a lot of good days. So it's, just, it's just more back to back and not stretched out. Yeah. I like to stretch it out. <laughs> stretch out the bed. I like to stretch them out. I'm yeah. like, once a week, that's really good for me. Twice a week, that that's cool. But I try not to like, try not to beat myself up on it too much, especially like in the competition like scene wise like when i'm competing like if i'm having a bad day so be it like i'm still here 
Like, See, I don't think women can compete. Why not? I guess they can they can compete in other sports. I don't know. Um with stunt writing, at least for me, it's emotional or it was. And I'm so detached now. But like before when it really meant a lot to me, my skills, mm-hmm. it was really emotional. Like mm-hmm. like I said, I'd be crying in my helmet yeah. all the time. Like if I can't land a trick or I really want to land a trick and I'm struggling and I'm not getting it. I'm fucking crying. It's hard. Yeah. Um, I think women could compete. Like there's definitely like, it's definitely a lot harder for them for sure. I give all the credit to you guys. It is insane. Like, especially if you want to compare like to like what we do versus what you guys do, it's like whole different level. But at the same time, like, you're a chick out there wheeling the Harley. Like, how many guys do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. Like, you know how intimidating? Imagine going out and you're hitting on a chick, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what's your hobby? Oh, I wheelie Harleys? I'm walking out. Their if, balls if shrivel. I, shrivel. I'm walking <laughs> out. Like, no. <laughs> like, that's so intimidating. It's so cool and badass on so many <laughs> levels. Like, oh my God, I would be embarrassed. Especially if I'm a guy, I'm like, I don't ride or anything. It's like, yeah, stunt ride Harleys. I wheelie like 500 pound motorcycles for fun. <laughs> so you're a savage. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yo, See you later. Yeah, no. I think chicks really do have it. That, um, it's definitely very difficult for them. But, you know, everyone has, you got to make it your own. You know, kind of like what Della Cruz is doing. They're making it their own thing. And you guys we definitely telling. have advantages over men in different areas, and that's why mm-hmm. it's dope. And that that video that came out, the like little movie thing, that was so so dope. so sick, so dope, so sick. I like that. Well, we definitely get more uh, attention. Yep. That guys do not like. <laughs> <laughs> they like it if they're the ones watching it, but they if they're stunt writers and they see a chick just, uh, you know, doing a, uh. A wheelie. A wheelie on a bagger on her scrape or her step plate, yep. like me. <laughs> and you get go fucking viral. Like, I mean, it's, I, I've had videos where it's just like, that's a trash video, but I just, I need to post something. It'll go viral. And I'll be like, I worked, I spent days editing this, like just choosing a song for this. I spent days on, like, I worked so hard on this trick. It's like 10,000 views. You know what people like? Raw. No music, nothing. They even like to see you get on your bike and clutch it up and bring it down yep. because they almost identify with it more than a like full edit, like pro athlete type of video. Mm-hmm. That last like selfie video I posted, I literally made like on the toilet in the bathroom, like at work, <laughs> and I posted on my story, and like ten people were like you should post this, like you need to post this. So I like took the story down. I'm like. I'll post it. Posted it. Now I'm at like a hundred. I'm like over a hundred thousand views on it right now. Holy shit! I don't know something like that. Yeah, that like blew up. Dude, I'm definitely experimenting with shit yeah, right no. now. Experiment. Be different. Yeah, like well, don't. not writing wise, but like content wise. <laughs> <laughs> it's still the same thing. Still yeah, same. yeah, you could take that and go with something else and different aspect in life. Totally. Everyone's everyone's too similar. Yeah. Be different. Yeah. Man, see, you're, you're full of advice and you don't even know it. I don't even know it. I don't even know where that just came from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really enjoyed t- talking with you and I appreciate your time, dude. Thank you for having me. I had a blast. Oh, I have to ask two more questions that I always fucking forget to ask my guests. So I just remembered. Mm-hmm. Two questions. Where can my audience find you? Sammy Stunts on Instagram. Um, that's really basically the only thing I got. I don't have a YouTube I don't think I will have a YouTube. I'd love doing YouTube videos and stuff. Like, this is awesome. But I don't think I'll ever do one. Um, So, yeah, just find me on Instagram, Sammy Stunts. Cool. And what impact would you like to make on the Harley stunt scene? I would love to see how far we can actually push um, just riding. Like, I'm trying to see how far I can push a stock Harley, like stockish Harley see what is actually possible and what's not possible and i'd love to see people get to that point and then take it further than me 
because I'm lost where I'm just like, what else is there? I'm trying to make things up. I'll hit up Jesse Ryan. I'm like, what else can we do? Because we're at the top. We're at the top of the level right now. There's no new tricks being made. If they're being made, it's from us. We're experimenting them. So it's like we're really on that line of what's possible, what's not possible. And I'd love to see how far we could actually take it and see where it goes. And like draw inspiration from other things and other yes. scenes Yep. and pull it in. Yep. I'd love to see like just take it in and be different. And I'd love to make an impact because, you know, I have my style and I guess a lot of people like it. And I want to see people almost chase that same style and chase what I'm doing and see where they can take it. I don't want them. I don't want anyone to copy me. I want people to, you know, try what I'm doing, but then take it their way and see how far they can go with it. I want to like not be like a stepping stone. Like I am trying to set this level, whole new level of just like, cause it's like stunt riding. What is there? Hand drags, no handers, like C standards. It's like, how much further can I go with that? Mm -hmm. And I really want to see like that level that I can take it at. I don't even know right now. If I get that foot lock on the handlebars, then you know what? how much more I can go? Then what? I'm going to have to learn double hand drags. But like double hand drag on some Brazilian stuff, that would be savage. But it's like I can experiment so much more with that. Like I can already do the bar, the bar lock, no throttle hand or like one hand coaster. But it's just like I feel like that's so similar to like the side style tricks I'm doing. I just haven't posted them because I want to be able to do a no hander and have like just like. Because that's going to, if I get that trick down, that's going to like step up the game so much. Like yeah. He's literally bar lock, he's like locking in with his foot on the handlebar. Who's doing that right now? So is no. he bar locking like this? So they bar lock like this and then you're like, <laughs> I don't know. It's so technical. Dude, you should hit him up. It's, it's so technical. Hit up those Brazilian dudes if they speak English. So the, I had a video like blow up and they're like, blew up in like brazil and i had all these guys follow me and they're like commenting i'm like i don't know what they're saying i like google translate and then it's like you stole our style like all talking shit i was like i'm sorry you're an inspiration thank you <laughs> oh my god yeah it was really weird they're like all hating but I it's like yeah really yeah that's surprising it was very surprising to me but i mean i also got a lot of love from them but i also got a lot of hate from them but i don't know i uh, have yeah. you ever looked up Sorry, I'm going to keep dragging this on, but have you ever looked up to a stunt rider and they gave you inspiration, but then they started hating on you because you're getting up to the level? No. No, like my biggest inspiration, like my top three favorite riders, like Dom, Tallboy, and Joey55. It's like my top three. And it's like hearing Joey55 talk about me like in the podcast was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And it's like, I'm riding with Dom and I'm doing the same tricks that Dom's doing. We're doing side, like side by side. Yeah. It's like, wow, this is amazing. Our tall boy came out to the line. He's like, let me see something. I just do like some crazy combos. He's like, I'm like, is that good? He goes, that was awesome. He goes, you don't need to do everything in one wheelie. <laughs> I was like, damn, well, okay. Dude, that's dope. You got so much love. Yeah, it's really cool. It's like, I'm like. I got into it because I watched the unknown videos. You got tall boy dragging his arm. I'm like, I love the arm drag. Dom's doing it. I'm like, I really want to go further. I did like the shoulder drag. I'm like, that's so cool. And I'm like, I'm getting recognition, not only from like other riders, but the people I looked up onto. And they're like, I'm like a little prodigy child to them. Yeah. They love it. They I'm watched like, you grow. This is so cool. And I know I can definitely take it way further, but I'm just going to stay back, do my own thing. Um, continue to push the limits on the bike but also stay in like sidelines type of deal i'm not trying i'm trying to see where the scene's going first i'm basically here to have fun i'm having a blast and i just happen to be a really good rider at the same time so what would you say to that guy that you previously were that looks up to you Okay, I seriously cannot be the only one that does not trust insurance companies. Don't you feel like they never pay you what you deserve for your accident? That's why I always call Law Tigers. They're specialized motorcycle attorneys. Yes, there's a difference between motorcycles and cars. 
That's why you need to call Law Tigers because they are the experts and you are not. And what's dope about them is you don't have to pay anything out of pocket. It comes out of your settlement. So if they don't get you paid, then they don't get paid. And the best part is once you call them, they take care of everything for you. You don't have to think about it at all until you're signing the paperwork, saying case closed. Don't let these insurance companies screw you over. Call Law Tigers and tell them that Drea sent you. If you're local to Arizona, call my boy Jay. I'll leave his info in the description below. What advice would you give him? Have fun. Don't get frustrated. Um, it is a wild ride. It's a Stunt riding is a big learning experience, not just like actually riding, but mentally. You are going to have your battles. You're going to crash, and you're going to think for the next week, why do I even do what I do? Because you're going to get up in the morning. You're going to shower. You're going to road rash is awful, especially on the back. You're going to be stuck to your bed. Why am I doing this? And then the week after you're healed. You're like, let's get back after it. It really makes you contemplate a lot of things in your decisions. And then like, oh, I, I can't get this trick. I'm battling it. Like, I can't do it. You're going to beat yourself up. Our biggest like haters are ourselves. We are so hard on each other. So just don't don't let those things get to you. Don't let a crash get to you. Don't let a trick get to you. Know, know your limits. And then also at the same time, push those limits. Don't let things beat you up. Take things easy. It's always going to be another day. Yeah. Always. Another day, another wheelie. Yep. Just go slow. Good luck with the mental battles because that is really hard to do. <laughs> I think it makes you stronger though. It does. It really does make you a strong person. It really does. Because it's like you go through a lot. Trying to just learn a stupid wheelie. <laughs> you totally. go through a lot. And it's crazy. It's a big... It, it. I will say Harley wheelies has fully changed my life. It has made me the person I am today. Who, who were you before? A shithead. Definitely a shithead. Spend my money on stupid things. So it's just like... I used to smoke like a lot of weed. Don't smoke any weed. I don't do anything. I'm like, all my friends who had like their life together and had like blue collar workers were like, they all had nice stuff. They all had nice bikes. So I'm like, I need to get my life together. Like if I'm going to chase this Harley scene, I need to get my life together. And I really want to go for it. So it like straighten my life out, like fully like saved me in a way where it's like, I got on track. This is what I want. This is my dream. This is what I want to do. If you told me five years ago that I'd be riding at the level I'm at now, in the state that I'm living at now, doing what I'm doing, I would never believe you. Never. Doing a podcast with you. Like, what? Fucking tell me about it, man. It's it crazy. It's the same fucking way. It's crazy. I, I was a shithead, too. Yeah. So, like, it's crazy how life works out. Mm -hmm. Take it take it easy. Why are you in a rush? Okay, what dude. are you in a rush to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Things will eventually all work the way that you want it to. And fall or, together. Yeah, and if it doesn't work the way it is, it's for a reason. I love and you're that. eventually going to go into the path that you were made to do. I love that. Yep. Well, you're dope, dude. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate you. Thank appreciate you, you doing me. this with me. Yeah. You going to go ride? I might. I think I might ride for like an hour. Fuck yeah, dude. It's so nice out. It's like a little cloudy.